everyone, I'm Keely and this is Voice of a Creative and today I'm going to be doing a chatty sew along while I sew the Freya sweater by Tilly and the Buttons. So I recently put out a Sew My Stash video which was basically lots of sweater patterns and getting you to choose one and the one that was chosen or had the most votes was the Freya sweater by Tilly and the Buttons, well my version of it anyway and it was in this beautiful French Terry. So this is a See You It 6 fabric and I got it from Namazi Fabrics I think at the beginning of the year, maybe last year. But really nice, um, cosy French Terry. It's got a really nice thickness to it and will make a really warm, snuggly jumper. Now I have gone ahead and just cut out the pieces already because I had a little bit of time last night and I thought it would make a, it a lot easier filming this video if I had the pieces already cut out. So this is also going to be a little bit different because I did actually request people to ask me some questions or give me some things to maybe talk about during the video. So I've written them down on this really cute little notebook so I will be answering some of these questions. Now the, this is something that I got from Pink Coat Club and I will link it down below but it's so cute, so much to do, so little time and obviously I got the blue version. So throughout the video I'll answer those questions and I will be kind of chatting through my steps through the video as well as I go through it all. So one of the questions was to talk a little bit more about the cats. This is Bramble who's on my lap now. So um, Bramble is actually, it's actually Bramble's birthday today and he is 11, so not massively old, but I have had him for a long time. I've had him since I was in university. We actually bought him as a family um, pet uh, when I still lived with my mum and my sister, but because he preferred me the most, I got to keep him when I moved out and then he stayed with me. And then we've also got Kiki, who I will insert a picture of. She might be up in a minute because she follows Bramble like a shadow. We've had her a week and uh, she's just a little black fluffy kitten. Um, we th we're just thinking that my husband's home a lot now um, because he's working from home and he just wanted a bit more company during the day because Bramble is very much my cat and so he wanted a cat that was a little bit more his. So the, one of the questions was, does my husband like the cats? And the answer is yes, of course he does. Is actually, he loves cats just as much as I do and is definitely a cat person as well. I'm gonna get um, started sewing. So I've started by pinning the shoulder seams. Now I'm in a bit of an awkward situation at the moment. So I chipped my blade on my uh, serger overlocker last Christmas and I replaced it myself and it's worked fine so far, but it's not working the best it can. It keeps sucking fabric into the overlocker and there's nothing wrong with it. It's just because I've not put the blade on properly. So what I'm going to have to do is basically I'm going to be sewing the uh, seams on the sewing machine with just a very loose basting stitch, trimming down the seam allowance myself and then putting it through the overlocker. So if it looks a bit choppy in some sections, that's what I'm doing because I need to get it repaired. I've got quite a few sewing projects on the go at the moment, so I don't want to lose it for a bit of time. So maybe during December, I might be able to take it in. I'm going to take it to Mark Pickle's sewing studio and he's going to have a look at it and that. So I have got the uh, Tilly stretch book here, which is what the uh, Freya pattern is in. And I um, make the same kind of version each time and I always do the same hack with the neckline. So I've never actually made the high neck version. I always have a slightly lower neck. And that's just because I really don't like super high things that come up onto my neck. So I kind of make it more a neckline like this. This sweater is the Elliot sweater. Um, and if you pop over to my Instagram, you'll be able to see a full picture. So I've started One Week One Pattern, which is run by Sewisfaction. And it's basically wearing the same sewing pattern every day, but different versions or different variations, or uh, it just in styled in different ways throughout the week. So I've chosen the Elliot sweater for this week. So I'm going to just baste the shoulder seams so it's 1.5 seam allowance and then I will trim them, go over to the overlocker and then I will add this which is cotton tape just to stabilise the shoulder seam. So I'm using a five um, stitch length just because it's kind of a basting stitch. I will take the pins out as I go. Um, but I'm just going to go through and stitch these. So this machine's really good. So I'm using the Janome Atelier 6 and it's got a cutting thread button 
and it's got a needle up down button but it still has the foot lever at the back for this the presser foot but i actually really prefer that i know some people like that to be automatic but i really do like to be able to position that myself so it's actually the perfect machine for that it also has a really good throat plate here uh, it makes it really easy to line things up and there's a lot more measurements on there than there are uh, there were on my previous machine which is also really useful so i'm just gonna trim the shoulder seams i'm just doing this by eye um, i'm using this little pair of fiskars scissors that i got and they might not be perfect for this job but they work well enough so those are stitched i'm just gonna sew them on the overlocker Okay, so I'm gonna stitch this um, on. So this cotton tape is, I don't know, I think a centimeter. Oh, no, half centimeter. And what I just do is I will lie this on the machine like that, and then I just lie this on top, still attached. And then I just sew with a kind of large stitch so that it really secures that. So in the pattern instructions, it now says to put in the neckband, but because I alter the neckband and the neckline each time, I actually do that step just before I hem the bottom and the sleeves. So my next step is to put in the sleeves. Now these aren't set in sleeves, you put them in flat. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that and I'll talk through some of the questions. So I often, when I cut things like this out, is I often forget to put the notches in which is always great fun when it comes to actually putting the sleeves in because of course you need them to do, um, to, have to match up the front and back and things like that. So I am just gonna pin this again because I am going to be doing it on the sewing machine. I always find clips get in the way a little bit on the sewing machine, I don't really like them. And I will be just pushing the cotton tape um, and the, sh the shoulder seam to the back as well. I think that's what that asked, asked you to do in the pattern. I'm, I'm not 100% sure. I have it there for reference, but actually I've made this quite a few times. And most t-shirts and sweaters are made in the same way. So I actually just do that. So I will pin it just at the top of the shoulder and then bring it round and pin it at the bottom edge there. So the first question um, I'm going to answer is somebody asked about my job and what year I teach and what subject I teach and why I became a teacher. So I am an art teacher and I teach in a secondary school and that is students who are 11 years old to 16 years old. So they pretty much do two years where every single student takes the subject and they have one lesson a week and then they select it for their GCSE, their qualification, and then they take that then um, and they get three lessons a week. I absolutely love being creative and that's why I choose um, art, but it's also something that really works well for me. Um, I'm really, really imaginative and creative and really love being social with people every day. Um, and the reason why I decided to become a teacher is I, always really loved this subject but I also really wanted to support other people in being really successful and actually being a teacher someone who's there to support and guide help them get their qualifications but also support them in becoming just really lovely people and things like that um, is something that I really wanted to do and it's actually a job I've wanted to do since I was a small child. I wasn't sure at first what kind of teacher I would want to be and I did some work experience where I went into art and drama lessons because my degree was in drama and art so um, I didn't I wasn't quite sure um, but then I settled on art because actually it was the one that I was most comfortable with and I absolutely love it and you, you need that you need the passion to really show through uh, which is really good and I do really enjoy the teaching side of my job but there are a lot of things, and that's partly to do with the kind of state of education at the moment, but there are a lot of things that make me incredibly stressed. And so it is really quite difficult for me to find time to sew, but also time to just relax and be myself and do the things that I really want to do. And that's kind of an ongoing struggle that I kind of really have. 
but it's definitely a very rewarding career and seeing people or seeing somebody that you've known since year seven um, and seeing them all the way through and then kind of leaving year 11 with the grades that they want because they've worked really hard is is really really lovely and um I, I don't actually know what other job i would do i think it really quite suits me kind of being social thinking on your feet problem solving at every opportunity but yeah really really enjoy it but just not the stressful side teachers really are overworked another one of the questions was a favorite place uk and abroad so in the uk i absolutely love bristol that's where i live and it is where i was born and where i've bought, where i was brought up but they're just i just feel like there's so many opportunities here and um it's it's a city but i live kind of on the outskirts and actually so i kind of have the best of both worlds but one of my favorite places to go is actually weymouth and that's kind of two hours south and the reason I love Weymouth is because I went there a lot as a child. So my nan had a caravan in a caravan park there and we went kind of every other weekend. And I just have these like amazing memories of that. And then since I've gone back with my husband and with my family and those memories have kind of continued and I go back to the places that I visited as a child and just really enjoy it. It's not necessarily the most busy place to go, but really love the beach and the walks and just feel really inspired when I go there. Just really enjoy it. So I would say in the UK that Weymouth is uh, my favourite place to go. And abroad is really difficult. So I've been to a few different places and I think each kind of held their own for me. So I have been to New York and then I've been to kind of Paris and other European places and then also Japan and I think weirdly although I really did struggle when we first arrived because of jet lag I think one of my favorite places to go abroad was Japan and that was just because everybody was so polite and so lovely everything was very organized and kind of ran very clearly and it was just really lovely and clean but my favorite place while I was in Japan it was when we went to Kyoto and we got to go to the Inari shrine and that was absolutely beautiful and walking through the red gates up the mountain was um, incredible and it was this just beautiful sense of people just really peaceful that is the only time i've kind of felt that that it was just like really inspiring but just really peaceful and i have got a video with clips from when i went to japan which i will post a link to um, and you can see me go fabric shopping in japan but that was really lovely uh, as well and I really struggled with the food in Japan I'm really not a great eater but actually just go into that place and it's a place that my husband really loved and see seeing the whole different culture was incredible so I've pinned these now so I'm going to sew them on the machine trim them and then get them onto the overlocker so I'm being really careful to make sure that I don't just cut through the jumper so I'm just using my hand to make sure I keep the rest of the fabric out of the way because that would be very, very annoying if I just cut through the fabric. Right, so I just had to go and feed Bramble because he was meowing around my feet and wouldn't settle. So I've just gone to feed him. So hopefully when he comes up again the next time, he won't uh, be constantly meowing. I've trimmed the shoulder seams, so I'm just gonna go through and overlock them. And now I'm gonna do, put the side seams together. So I need to pin it along the arms and then down the sides. So I'm going to match the underarm seam first and then I will just match along. Um, I haven't actually done the side notches but it is the same length so it works out usually. And as long as you've cut the fabric kind of correctly it kind of works out. So the next question is about how I met my husband. So I met my husband uh, kind of 13 years ago so I was not quite 18 at the time and we actually talked on uh, MSN Messenger, if you remember MSN Messenger. And then we met on uh, the bus going into Bristol Town Centre and then kind of went to a few parties and bits and pieces and it turned out that my mum knew his mum from when they worked um, years ago, just after they'd had us basically, but we didn't know each other then. So then we then kind of went out for about 10 years and then we obviously got engaged and then got married um, and that's been three years now uh, we got married kind of just after our 10 year anniversary 
yeah so it's it's been a long time um we're very kind of used to uh used to each other and he's used to my creative enterprises that kind of messing up the house although now i've got this room i don't mess up the house as much i still do a little bit because i still cut out downstairs so it's quite a nice thing to do kind of in company so i kind of cut out on the dining room table and then kind of watch tv at the same time and it's just yeah quite nice because you can then talk to somebody so i'm do nearly done with pinning this together it's actually really irritating having to pin it sew it and then overlock it because normally at this stage i would just uh, put some clips in and just whiz it through the overlocker and i think that that's really one of the benefits of the um, having an overlocker now i didn't have one for years and i've been sewing for i think kind of 10 years or so I mean I started sewing when I was 16 but like properly sewing and I've been sewing like knits for six or seven years before I got my overlocker which I only got I think it was last October so it, may, it might have been a year now with my overlocker I did a lot of research of what what I wanted to get in the end I just cho chose one um, I think what the most important feature and it sounds ridiculous the most important feature of an overlocker is if you can thread it and mine so mine is the brother lock 2104d it is super easy to thread there's no putting your fingers in weird places it, it doesn't take me very long to thread at all and it's relatively good it is an entry level machine but it, it does everything that i would want it to or it would if the blade wasn't broken but then that's my own fault you might want to look into being able to doing like varying foot pressure potentially if you're going to be sewing lots of different fabrics and potentially if you want to do different stitch lengths and things like that you might want to look at what features but i think definitely it just being easy to thread is something that's just really important so uh, i've pinned that now so i'm just going to go through and sew it okay so i've done both side seams so what i'm going to do is try it on i would definitely say is if if this is like the first time you're making the pattern try it on before now just maybe have it over you like a weird cape before you do the side seams to just check the shoulders are right. I'm gonna try it on, check the fits right, check the length of the sleeves is right and the length of the kind of body. And then I'm gonna check um, how low down I've already cut the neckline. And then I'll decide whether I wanna cut that lower or not. So I'm just gonna go and do that now. I've tried it on, I feel like the neckline needs to come down a little bit more. And I do need to take the sleeves up slightly. Um, I'm not sure why on this version I need to, but I need to take them up by about an inch and a quarter, but the other length is fine. So I will just trim the seam allowance on the side and then run that through the overlocker and then I can go through and uh, trim the bits that I need to trim and then hem it. So I actually really love the colour and the look of it. I think it looks um, really lovely. It's also really nice and snugly warm. I have actually ordered um, a leaf print, uh, See You at Six French Terry, and I would definitely recommend them because they're just really cosy and warm. I wouldn't, with some French Terries, you could almost make a dress out of it, but they're not really that kind of weight. It's definitely kind of jumpers and other things but just really lovely weight and so cosy and soft as well. And definitely uh, the green color waves really work for me. They do it in quite a range of colors. I know they've got a new lot of fabric out now, um, but I've definitely been going for some cozier fabrics for the winter. Now I was wearing my jumper, um, but cause I know I've got to try this on again, probably just to check it. I've taken it off and I'm actually wearing one of my Molly tops now and I got the this stripy jersey from Like So Amazing and I think she's still got some left so I will link that down below so you can go and have a look. It's really, it's quite a fine jersey but it's actually really perfect for wearing under jumpers um, so you just have those like layers and definitely the Molly top which is by Sew Over It, it's just a really easy pattern as well so um, if you haven't made anything with knits before, that's definitely something uh, to consider. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and sew this on the overlocker. Sorry, another bramble food break. Um, I'll tell you what, it's really lucky that I bought these lights because it is dark outside because it's, what, quarter to five? And there is no way I would be able to film videos for you with the light disappearing so quickly. I can't believe it. I think I got my lights just in time. Um, I'm actually quite pleased with how bright they make everything. I think they're really kind of good. I'm, I'm getting used to them because they are quite, 
uh, quite there's quite a bit of glare right I'm just gonna trim the sleeves so to trim the sleeves I basically put both sleeves together and then I just match like that and then put them on a flat surface together to make sure that they are matched so then I will measure using the tape measure and then I'll just cut so I'm measuring an inch and I'm just gonna cut and um, one thing I have found that I need is I think I need like a little thread pot on the table which is something that I'm gonna look into making because I've got a bin under the table but it's a bit of a nuisance to keep kind of reaching down so I would like a little pot because I end up with like little piles of stuff like this everywhere um, and it'd be easier if I just could put it in a little thread pot right and then the neckline slightly different I need a bit more space so again what I do is match the sh shoulder seams I'm just gonna lie that flat so I match the shoulder seams and then what I'll do is I, now I just do this by eye as you might have realised from if you watched my last video about the Kilo Wrap dress, I do just tend to go with things. So I'm only going to bring it down just a tiny bit. I'm going to bring it down equally all the way round. So I haven't pinned it or anything, I'm just cutting um, round. And I have got to add the neckband. But what I've done is cut the neckband slightly longer, so I will measure it. So a little bit cut off. Then what I will need to do is measure it. So this is my neckband as it stands. Obviously it's not gonna be uh, that long, but um, I do the 80% rule. So what I will do is first of all, measure the neckline as it now stands, or measure half of it. And I do that in centimeters because I feel it's a little bit more accurate. So just follow the curve. So that's 29. So you've got a basically, so we've got 58. So I am just gonna use a calculator. So we've got 58 divided by 100 equals, and then times by 80%. So uh, that's at 46 centimeters. So I am actually gonna cut it down. And I think that should be all right. Let's, let's go with that. So I do an 80% neck band. So I literally measure it, first of all, work out, the percentage and then just times that to find 80% and for me because this measures at 58 the percentage is 46.4 so I'm gonna round it up to 47 because why not so what I would then do is fold my neckband in half and we've got 47 doing maths on video 23.5 so I'm going to measure it half and then you've got the seam out. So I'm going to cut it down just a little bit because I might keep it longer. Yeah, so I've, I've got 50 now. So it's probably about 85%, but by the time I um, sew it, it should be all right. Um, that's the rule I generally use. Somebody asked a question about neck bands and how they'd used, uh, how they could use a different fabric for a neck band. What I would say from my experience, and this is literally just from experience with, with neck bands, is I quite often use uh, exactly the same fabric for the neck band. But if you're using a different uh, fabric, one of the key fabrics to use for a neck band would be the jersey ribbing. Um, and I've used that and that's that's extra stretchy and that's deliberately so that it can lie flat with the neck band. Um, and that's why it's made for that and for cuffs and things as well. So I'll definitely potentially go for that or you use exactly the same fabric. Otherwise, you're looking for a similar weight fabric with a similar stretch percentage. Now, if you use a fabric that has more or less stretch, it's more likely that it will warp or ruffle or things like that. So that's what you're thinking. So if you're using a cotton jersey, find if and you're doing a different fabric neckband, use another cotton jersey and kind of stretch them to check the stretch. So the way you can do that, I think it says in this stretch book actually, but you would measure kind of 10 centimetres and then you would stretch it along a ruler and see how much it stretched and then work out the percentage that way. And you'd want the stretch to be about the same. I would probably just do an informal check and just do this and then do the same with the other one to see what it came out like. But yeah, it's ticked to similar fabrics, similar weights fabrics as well, because obviously even cotton jerseys can be different weights and then similar stretch percentage, and then that's gonna help you. Now, I'm quite comfortable with just hacking the neckline, changing the neckband, but if you're not as comfortable with that, um, I would really kind of urge you to just keep with the same, the same fabrics. And 
also it is a matter of trial and error and as everything with um, sewing is and what I would also kind of urge you to do is don't just overlock your neckband straight in so on the sewing machine to kind of mas basically machine based it try it on check that it's all fine then overlock it afterwards because then you've got that extra thing you can always unpick sewing machine stitching but sticking on bits you've cut off on the overlocker is well it's actually impossible um, and you'll end up with it being all funny or you might have to cut the neckband again and it'll be really quite annoying i'm going to stitch this neckband together and then i'm going to try the jumper on again to just check all the lengths again since i've trimmed them and then i will put the neckband in and then i can go about hemming everything okay so fits really good the length of the sleeves is much better so i ended up cut cutting off an inch i don't really know what happened there i may have added on an inch then I was cutting it out. I don't know, I did it last night, I was really tired. It's after like a 12 day, 12 day? 12 hour um, kind of day. So next steps for me, I'm gonna overlock the sleeves, overlock the bottom of it, and putting the neck band. And what I will do is put in the neck band first and then I can do all the overlocking together. And then um, it'll be time to just fold up and hem. So I'm going to put the neckband in first. So I'm going to turn the jumper inside out, first of all. And then I'm going to just mark the centre front of the jumper. So fold it in half. I'm just going to mark that with a pin. And then I will mark the centre back as well. Okay, so folding my neckband in half. Now I've overlocked it. I did just go ahead and overlock the sleeves and the bottom as well, just because it's easier to just do that while things together. I do really like to batch task. So at the moment I'm only making one jumper, but if I had several others cut out, I would do kind of all the shoulder seams, set and do all the sleeves and everything like that. And then that way you can make a few things at the same time and that's what I usually do with my uh, dresses that I make um, I make them all at the same time so looking at the back of the jumper and what I'm gonna do or the sweater I folded this over so the seams line up and then I'm just gonna line that up with the center back pin and I just put that in so that's then secured I then work out where the other center is and that center point then I secure at the center front and then I will stretch it now this is a really weird process I'm used to it now if you stretch it and it hangs down like that it means that it's the right amount of stretch for your neck band now I know that's really like woolly but that's how I've kind of done it in the past and it seems to like work well so I make sure I put my hands kind of on the inside and I stretch and pin round, making sure the neck band stays folded as I do. And I always stretch it slightly less at the back um, and stretch it slightly more at the front. And that's just more to do with personal preference. I find it gets a bit too tight on the back of my neck, um, which is a real pressure point for me in terms of just muscle tension. So I just kind of stretch it as I go. I actually hold it with my little finger and then bring it up and then you can always adjust the pins if you need to. So the final question uh, that I've got on here was have I sewn anything for my husband and uh, I don't know if you've heard me mention before in my makes videos but I have started to sew for him a little bit more now so I've made him uh, two pairs of Hudson pants so far the true bias pattern and I have made him a t-shirt and a sweater as well. So for the sweater, I made the Paxton sweater from Seamwork. Um, I don't think the fabric was quite right for that because it's kind of stretched out a little bit across his shoulders. The t-shirt I didn't make um, from a pattern. I actually traced off one of his t-shirts. So I actually cut up a t-shirt that was too short for him now. And I cut it up and then I've divided it and kind of drawn off the pattern pieces from that. So. I've done those couple of things. He really likes the jogging trousers. So I've got a few more pairs lined up. So I went and bought some relatively cheap sweatshirting. So he kind of wants it in like greys and blacks and things. 
Um, so I went and got some cheaper sweatshirting to make a few pairs and he wears them kind of every day because he's home. We have struggled in the past to get them the right length because he is re really quite tall. So yeah, so I've done some sewing for him and actually it's really funny because some days I'm like, oh, we're both wearing uh, things made by me, um, which I think is quite funny. And I think I went to like my mum's house once and I was with my sister my mum and my husband and me were all wearing things that I'd sewn and I was like yay everyone's wearing things I've sewn and um, so I do sew for my mum and my sister as well. The neckband's in so I will just sew round on the sewing machine. So I'm just gonna pop this on to check the neckband is correct and then I will trim and overlock it. <clears throat> so it's looking really good so I'm just gonna trim the extra from the neckband so I can overlock it. So as you might know um, or you might be able to see I'm approaching 3,000 subscribers so if you are watching this and you're not subscribed I'd really really appreciate it if you would subscribe. If you want more videos like this or you want some other types of videos then please just comment below. Um, I always read through the comments um, and really try to reply. Just let me know what other kind of videos that you might like me to film because so I can always try and get some different types of videos if you want to see something a little bit different. But it's really exciting when I first started my channel um, and I got to 100 subscribers literally it was, it was incredible I didn't think that that would happen and now I'm approaching 3,000 again I'm li literally in awe in shock um, I didn't think that I would get there I mean it has been nearly a year and a half I think of me doing YouTube videos there's a lot of videos to go back and watch if you are um, new to the channel it's just really fun and it's really lovely for me to look back and see Kind of how my videos have kind of improved um, and also it's like really lovely documentary of of my makes over the last bit of time um, which I'm really pleased uh, to have started it is it's been a really fun uh, process right so that's ready to overlock so I'm gonna go ahead and do that so uh, one of the next jobs will be to just go around and stitch uh, the that down so at the moment I've got the edge sticking up and I'm just going to go around and stitch it down and also to measure and hem the sleeves so I will do this partially by eye but I'm also going to be using my seamstress gauge which is by rocking stitch now I've just got the other one of this as well so this is the one that's in centimeters and I've also got one now that's in inches just for different things and I find them really useful for the different things so the sleeves and the hem on this is two centimeters so what I'll do is I'll go around and do it by eye first and then I will just check the measurements before I stitch round and then the jumper will be finished. So just with the hem of this I just measure it the side seams first of all and then that kind of gives you a bit of a guide. Um, with woven fabrics I've started stitching round and basically I go round doing just a few pins first of all and then I just put a few more pins in if I feel like I need to. According to how slippery the fabric is, this is quite good actually, it's not very slippy so but it's just so I make sure it stays level all the way round. Not like anybody really checks your hems actually to see if they're level. So at the moment in terms of sewing, there's a few different things going on. So I am going to be sewing the Myosotis dress by Deer and Doe. I've got that cut out ready. I'm going to um, test out the bodice first. And I've got a few different fabrics to make it in. I'm not sure what I'm going to choose yet. It's all according to how the test version, uh, the, well the test bodice goes and I think I'm gonna make that without the collar so um, I want to test that out and then I started last night cutting out a few pairs of Hudson pants so I've got these um, jogging trousers that I wear they are so old and they're really bobbly and one of my me made pairs that I made last year I'll go kind of see through and bobbly where I've worn them so much so I do need to make a few pairs and I do have some sweatshirting and I also because it is a one week one pattern I really want to make an Elliot uh, tee so you can do it as a sweater or you can do it just as a t-shirt so I'm going to make another t-shirt and I'm hopefully going to be able to wear that then to work because it's the difficulty it's all well and good doing these um, sewing challenges but then I do still need to go to work so I'm hoping that I'll be able to be able to wear a plain Elliot tee with um, a Donovan skirt because uh, I've got two of those I'm potentially hope, 
I will get away with wearing it twice maybe, but like the um, skirt. Or I'm wondering about wearing like a jumper. Um, so I actually don't own any trousers that would be suitable for work. But then I do have my Elliot dress. So I don't think I'll be able to manage every single day just because mostly what I've got are sweatshirts and t-shirts and if I had um but it, I do need to look fairly smart in work I can't just uh turn up in like sweaters and stuff so hopefully I'll have enough stuff to wear and if not I might just have to miss a couple of days it's just one of those things that sometimes has to happen with work I'm really kind of excited to see different people's variations I think that's going to be really good I think that's something really fun I definitely liked this challenge last year so last year I did the Blackwood cardigan and I really need to start up some more Blackwood cardigans. I'll tell you what, I really feel like I'm missing some basics. I ne almost need a whole kind of like sewing weekend where I literally just blitz through some basics and I, I'm trying to be a bit more mindful about my sewing and like sew some, kind of sl do some slower garments, but I need some cardigans. Well, I mean need. I want some more cardigans um, and I've got a new the new patterns as well that I can try out the simplicity ones so I do want to give those a try as well and then the other thing I'm going to start to do is start to sew for Christmas so um, I mean if you want to have a video about my Christmas sewing plans then just comment below to let me know but I have got a few plans to make things for a family and friends and things so I've finished pinning I'm going to go ahead and sew this so what I'm going to do is change the stitch length um to actually three uh maybe 3.5 actually um it's just the normal uh straight stitch now, some people say to use twin needle for this. Sometimes I sew twice round, sometimes I just sew once. I haven't really had any problems with hems and straight stitch splitting or um, popping in the past with jersey. I know some people have, but I prefer not to use a zigzag stitch because I feel like I don't, well, I don't really like that effect. I would like to try out the twin needle with this machine because I haven't had a chance to try that yet. So I would like to give that a try and hopefully uh, I will be able to uh, coming up to Christmas. So everything's sewn now. I'm going to go and just press and iron it um, and just trim off the thread and then I will come back and show you. So I've finished my Freya sweater and I've pressed it as well. and I'm really, really pleased with it. So I'm just gonna stand up and show you. Now, I know I'm very much wearing it with trousers that probably don't go. I would probably wear it with jeans or maybe under a pinafore, but really pleased with the neckline. I think it's a really good um, height on me. Fits really well on the shoulders. I did alter this slightly. So I've made the back a little bit longer, which has moved the shoulder seam. And that's got rid of the massive um, kind of gathering that I was getting here so and then the sleeves for some reason they're still slightly too long I don't really get it but I'm, I'm actually really happy with it because it's so cozy and warm um fit, fits well but isn't too tight on my stomach so definitely if I wore it with jeans you wouldn't kind of see the jean underneath but really please love the color love the fabric it's super soft and cozy and at the back as well feel like it just fits really nicely the Freya definitely has shaping, so it goes in at the waist and then comes out at the hip, which actually works really well for me. So yeah, really love it. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please press the thumbs up and subscribe if you want to hear more from me. Goodbye.